What's going on guys? Today we at the most recent trade in the NHL that sent Dmitry Orlov and Thornton Hathaway from the Washington Capitals to Boston Bruins. Now again, this trade actually went through the Minnesota Wild as a third man. They pick up a fifth round pick to retain a quarter of Dmitry Orlov's salary. Also too, Boston got Svetlikov from the Minnesota Wild, but he's a KHL player who's pretty average, so there's a good chance he'll just stay in Russia the rest of his career. So for the purposes of this video guys, we're just looking at like the main trade, which is Orlov and Hathaway to Boston in exchange for Craig Smith, a first, second, and third round pick. So um, look at the Washington Capitals here, we'll see. Backstrom's on the block. Dmitry Orlov, though, is not. Um, in game, you can see 31 years old, 84 overall. I've actually already reduced the contract by 50%. Normally, it'd be 5.1 million. Expiring deal there. Obviously, a solid top four defenseman. And then, along with him, too, they actually get Garnet Hathaway. He's like a pretty solid um, bottom six forward. I know he likes to throw the body around. Pretty big hitter. Um, in game, 30 years old, 80 overall. 1.5 million for one more year. Again, I feel like he'll probably fit well into Boston's bottom six. So, if they get both of those guys back, just kind of giving more depth to this team that's already stacked. First NHL, I'm pretty sure they've pretty much locked the playoff spot already. On pace to be the best regular season NHL team of all time. I think they need 62 wins to do that, and right now they're at 43. So, we'll see whether or not they can get that done. And obviously, on the opposite side, you got the Washington Capitals. They've actually lost their last five straight games. So, I think Washington's clearly showing they're a bit of a seller here at the deadline. Probably not, you know, full sale, but all I was expending a deal. They're willing to get rid of them. So uh, next year, guys, we'll see what Boston's giving up here in Craig Smith, who actually has like no value. Say on overall in game, 3.1 million there on an expiring deal. I feel like 79 is probably a little low for him. I think he's probably a bit better than that. And then with that too, a lot of draft picks. First round pick 2023, second round pick 2025, and then the third round pick there's in 2024. So Washington here honestly gets a pretty big haul for again or love on an expiring deal. And we actually don't even have to uh, retain the extra 50% here for this trade to go through. It looks like we got the value on our side, medium difficulty. I feel like Washington probably says yes here. And yeah, trade accepted. And so after that trade, guys, what the Bruins lineup's looking like. Obviously, best team just adding more depth. Gonna be even harder to play against. First line there is Marshan, Bergeron, DeBrusque. Second line, Pashnak, Krejci, Zaka. Third line, you got Taylor Hall, Carly Coyle, Nick Felino. I mean, that just shows you their depth when Taylor Hall's a third liner. Uh, fourth line there, Greer, Frederick, Hathaway now. That's gonna be very hard to play against in the playoffs. Um, in terms of the defense, we got Grizzlick, McAvoy, top pair. Carlo Lindholm second with Orlov Clifton on the bottom pair. Again, like this team is just so solid top to bottom. Especially two goaltending, Allmark looking like one of the best goalies in the league this season and backing him up Swain, who's one of the best young goalies in the league. Again, just so much depth on this team. No wonder why they're just crushing it. Might go down as the best regular season team of all time. Now, next year, guys, I'll show what Orlov looks like as a Boston Bruin. Uh, before now, he's never played for another team other than the Washington Capitals. I believe 11 years with that team. So, uh, change of scenery for him. And there you have it, Orlov as a Boston Bruin. I will say, defensive wearing number nine is definitely a bit strange to me, but uh, it doesn't look too bad there with the Bruins. But now, next year, we're going to try the trade from the Capitals' perspective and see whether or not it goes through. And now, as you guys can see here, the Boston Bruins are interested in Orlov. Surprisingly, not Hathaway. Also, surprisingly, Smith isn't on the block, considering, like, pretty bad contract for his rating. Especially, too, like, they're a buyer. Usually, the first-round pick for buyers on the block. Not the case here. Not even the second. Only the third. Uh, the value's on their side, but they want Orlov. I would trade him to them at 50%, which might help smooth the trade through. Let's see whether or not they accept. Trade's rejected, okay. So in-game, EA feels like Boston's winning this trade is obviously Boston rejected, Washington accepted. Personally though, real life, I feel like it's not a terrible trade. I do think a first, second, and third's quite a bit to give up here uh, for a couple rentals, but like you're getting two players instead of one. Orlov's really solid on his own. Orlov's probably going for a first and a third, maybe a first and a second. You add the extra pick, you get Hathaway, plus you get rid of Smith's contract. I don't really think it's that terrible, especially for a team like Boston that's currently, you know, going for it. Who cares, like, what those picks are going to turn into five years from now? You're trying to win right now. It's one of the best teams ever. Uh, makes a lot of sense to me. So, uh, next year, guys, we're going to look at the Capitals lines after that trade. And after the trade, guys, see what the Capitals lines what it looked like when healthy. Ovi, he came back today against the Ducks. So, um, obviously, having him back is a big help for the Capitals. But it might be too little too late, especially when the GM just trades Orlov. Clearly, he doesn't really see this team making it, especially, too, just because there's so much competition with those last two wildcard spots. You got the Capitals in the mix, Sabres, Panthers, Red Wings, Penguins. Islanders, like six teams basically battling for two spots. But, but you never know, they still could get in. I mean, that first line solid. Um, second line there as well. I think Brown might be done for the year though. Uh, third line there. Again, like you actually have a lot of depth on this team when everyone's healthy. Like in terms of scratch forwards, you also got Johansson there. Nicholas Obkabel. Uh, now defensively wise, losing Orlov's a big hit. Gustin's been playing better for them this year. Losing Carlson a couple months back, obviously it was a huge hit to this team. They don't want defensemen. I think if he was still there, they're probably, you know, more securely in a playoff spot. Uh, Jensen, Fairberry, Irwin, TVR, like, yeah, the defense definitely looks weak now, especially with Carlson still out. Goal-tunning-wise, they got Kemper still as their starter, so 
Like, this team could still make the playoffs, but I think it's a good move. Train Orlov's on an expiring deal, get some picks, which you can maybe use for, like, one more run with Ovechkin before he retires, after, of course, beating Gretzky's goal record. But that's gonna do it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section which team you think won the trade. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.